Hello, Ryan here with another Uncomplication. Uh, it's story time today. Uh, in the last two videos that I posted, which um, which I've disclosed, I really made those last two videos because I'm trying to uh, auction this art piece. Uh, it's an important one to me. It's a simple drawing, painting, um, but it has a deeper story and I wanted to share that with you. So um, there's only a few hours left to bid for this piece, so go check it out. The link is in the description. I hope it ends up in a good home, and maybe the person who buys it uh, would make a good guest on the show. So if you have a story that you also want to share, it might be a cool conversation. But I want to share this story. I said that I would. Um, it was one. This is uh, all one of the more meaningful experiences that I had when I was probably 20 two or 23 and I'm 40 now. So this was a while ago. Um, so for a long time back in those days, I thought I was losing my mind and I felt like the world that I was living in, by which I mean the, the schools, the shopping and dining and TV and and all of the uh, things that people concern themselves with were so far removed from this deeper beauty that I had seen when I was younger. Uh, when I was probably like 15 or 16 is when I had my first really big experience of seeing, seeing through the veil. Uh, I was camping with some friends and I was... Um, I remember just walking up this trail behind uh, my friends and I looked off to my side and it was the first time that I saw my environment as this living, breathing organism. And I saw the dead trees that were decaying, that were becoming the soil, that the new trees, uh, the living trees were growing from. And I just was awestruck by the beauty and mystery and power of the world that we live in. And it felt like the great universal creator itself was looking right at me as if to say, there is so much more than you understand and probably will ever understand. And so that set me on this path where a lot of my friends were out drinking and smoking and chasing girls around and just being kind of reckless idiots. I was doing a lot of that stuff too, but I had in the back of my mind all the time this awareness that there was so much more happening. And I started to retreat into that. I started to go off by myself into the mountains of Colorado and then later farther out into the deserts of Utah. And I would just load up my little Honda Civic with uh, bagels and peanut butter and disappear for a week and see how lost I could get in the back country and just you know bring a tent and, and sleep out there and um, really get lost in that raw, unfiltered experience and I felt at a certain point that it was my 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 duty my calling my my mission in life to share those experiences somehow with other people and at this time this was like the late 90s uh, into the early 2000s didn't really have YouTube there was no YouTube there was barely an internet um, and I think that there were circles of people talking about these things, but I sure wasn't a part of them. And so at the time, it just felt so lonely. And uh, yeah, I thought I was going crazy. It's like, how can no one else see this, understand this, want to talk about this? And the friends that I had that were religious and had the word God to trade around, it was so apparent to me that they were talking about something different than what I was experiencing. Okay, so this image, uh, this, this is inspired by a specific time when I went out uh, to the desert again, and it was at a time in my life when everything seemed to be going wrong. 
I was so depressed. I was so anxious. I was so um, worried about my own my own life. Um, you know, having these experiences when I was younger and feeling like my job is to witness this profound expression and to share it. And then I got pulled into school and I got pulled into jobs and I got pulled into all of these uh, parts of the culture that I didn't want to be a part of. And I just had this feeling like the great creator itself was like, what is wrong with you? I've shown you these beautiful truths and here you are going back to comfort and safety and jobs and nine to fives and working and as i drove out this time in the desert i just remember being uh for the first time really paranoid that the rocks were going to slide down and you know um, crush my car or that i'd get a flat tire way out in the middle of nowhere in my honda civic no one knows where i am um you know, the things that I were doing were quite reckless. And I started to see that recklessness. And so I sat down um, out in the desert and I was, I was ready to run home. I was ready to run away. I was ready to call it all quits and just go back. I mean, I think that I was probably like manic depressive and borderline suicidal at this point, because again, I just had, I had glimpsed this immensity and I was failing at every inch to do anything meaningful with it. And I sat down and I started to meditate, which I had never done before. The only time that I'd ever really seen meditation in our culture was in these kind of uh, cartoony caricatures of like the floating little llama in a uh, Bugs Bunny cartoon or something. Um, at that time, this was kind of fringe and the idea of yoga or meditation was like, oh, I'm going to sit there and go lam, 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 and I'm going to, you know, go into nirvana as this glowing <laughs> alternate reality or something. And I had been reading Joseph Campbell, uh, still one of my favorites. And he was, you know, in the book that I had with me, which I think was the inner reaches, it was, I think it was myths to live by. And it talked about, um, yeah, some of these systems of meditation. So that was just in my awareness. I didn't know how to do it, had no introduction to it. So I sat down and immediately I was terrified. Um, you know, I'm out alone in the desert, sitting with my eyes closed in the sun. And I start to worry that, uh, you know, a, a, a coyote or a, something could be out there that would be like sneaking up on me or just... Um, that I was going to die, my own mortality, and just feeling the physicalness of my body and knowing that I was this machine of sorts, of all these little tubes and blood and bile and uh, just that, those types of things could send me into these really paranoid spirals. And that fear was just overwhelming. And I was sitting there and just in this complete despair and fear. And I made the decision to myself that I was just going to go into the fear. Um, with all that anxiety, I was just going to help it be as anxious as it was going to be. So as I sat there in complete fear, I had this second voice in my head, myself kind of coaching myself, this meta awareness that could see myself and how tangled up I was but was able to, at a distance, calmly, compassionately um, coach myself through it. And so this voice, my own voice was like, okay, you, you're afraid, let's be afraid. Let's bring out everything that we know about fear. And at that place and time, being alone out in the desert, it was the immediate surroundings. It was the fear of there being a predator or something that could jump out and grab me. Uh, I let those fears be magnified and I poured kerosene on the fire of my fear. Every little noise that I heard, I mean, I was sitting there with my eyes closed and every little noise that I heard from the, the little trees behind me, I let be predators. I let them be these demons, these, um, you know, the scaries of the scary. 
and I brought it out and I pushed it and I pushed it and I pushed it. And I, you know, I dug deep. The things that I'm most afraid of, losing the people that I love, uh, my own mortality and the knowledge that I was going to die. The, um, you know, I used to get really um, wigged out about getting blood drawn and just, you know, the thought about myself as being this organism with this vascular system and all of these different parts that could go wrong and just that anxiety. I just, I, I pushed it and I pushed it so that I was, you know, in my mind, you know, sticking needles in every vein and just pulling myself inside out with this knowledge that I was ultimately lost, that I would die and that it could be awful and scary and I just let it be. I didn't run from it, I didn't hide from it, I pushed it and I pushed it until ultimately everything was lost. Everyone I loved was going to die. Everything that I might do in my life was ultimately going to be washed away by the sands of time. And I just, I, I, I was living then in that moment in the depths of absolute sorrow and hell. I just let everything be my own personal hell to the point where I was so sad that all I could do was weep. And I broke down crying for all of the things that I had lost and would lose. And I thought about my friends that had died when I was younger, which I had quite a few. Um, really starting with my friend uh, John who killed himself sophomore year of high school and then there were a lot of others after that and so just going into those experiences from that place of sadness I just had that same voice okay sadness you know sadness let's bring out everything that we know about sadness and it was just the the loss it was the loneliness it was the knowledge that I was that I was dead already that I was going to die and that all of the people that I had lost just um, reflected the deep infinite loss that is life itself and I wept and I cried and I and I fueled that fire I thought about losing my parents and my my sister and my pets and my uh, my girlfriend at the time just everyone that I loved knowing that they would be lost and that's when something really surprising happened. So you know how you can cry so hard you laugh and you can laugh so hard you cry? There's, there's a boundary between those two emotions. They, they share a common place and it's almost this place of absurdity. And I got to the point where I was crying so hard at the loss of everything that I realized that if everything was ultimately lost, then there was nothing I needed to try and save. Um, just accepting that truth that, that I was going to die and that everyone I loved was going to die. There was, there was nothing I needed to do because the game of trying to fix it ultimately fails. And so I found this, this, this laughter, this hilarious joke of what the universe was and was doing that liberated me from that fear and sadness because there was no way to change it. There was no way to fight it. There was no way to go against it. And once I accepted what it was and accepted the loss of myself and everything else, then those same things became these incredible gifts. And my, my relationships, my life, my my very being was just seen as this incredible gift that was mine to experience. And there was no way to do it wrong. It was just mine to do. And so I, I transitioned from this sadness to this joy. And in the same way, I had that voice that was saying, okay, joy, you know joy. Let's bring out everything that we know about joy. And it was, it was like being a kid on Christmas. It was just being given all of these gifts. Everything that I could think of in my in my mind and in my life were these gifts just overflowing with with beauty. And I got to the point where I just felt so filled by the contents of my life that I was then overflowing. That 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 joy and that emotion was just overflowing back 
so that I just loved them all so much. And that's where I transitioned from this joy into this love. Joy was being filled. Love was overflowing so that I couldn't help but extend that positive energy back to the world, to everything. And so same thing. I had that voice that said, okay, love. We know love. Let's bring out everything we know about love. And I went into my my relationships. It was all people. It was all these the ones who had cared for me, the ones who loved me, that I loved back, and even people that I didn't like. It was, it was like um, I was so filled that I couldn't help but extend that love back out to the world. And yeah, my, my, my family, my friends, my relationships, my pets uh, just came flowing back out into this, this balance, this equilibrium. Joy was being filled love was was returning it all and just being this constant cycling of joy and love and um, from there i felt peace i felt this deep peace that everything was right in the universe i was right where i belonged there was nothing more that i needed to do or figure out that everything in my life was a gift and an experience that was mine to have and I was in this, in this cycle of flow of love and energy. And at that point, I opened my eyes and I saw beauty. And everything, that same surroundings that were once hellish and awful, were now beautiful and heavenly. And speaking of such things. So that, friends, is my story um, of the, the desert thinker here. Uh, this piece of art that uh, was inspired by those those trips out to the desert and this event in particular stands out as one of the most transformational moments of my life and I went out there a quaking mess and the rest of that trip I was completely present immersed in the beauty of life and I, I saw my life as a gift, as, a, as an expression, not of something to be clung on to or um, that I needed to, to save it all or to do it right or um, all, of the, all of the fears, all of the sadness, they were valid, but they were also the backdrop against which all of our gifts stand out. And... I wrote a couple things about this on uncomplication.com. Um, one of them is you you become who you're being. Um, I guess that's a, that's a different story, but, but I, I really have this feeling at this point that we are, we are who and what we are moment to moment and it's always changing. And if you have a moment of extreme joy or love, there is eventually sorrow ahead and and if you are sad and down and depressed there will eventually be joy and the goal is not to be happy all the time or to or to cling on to one experience over the other it's to see how these experiences are flowing and changing and we are generating them uh, in a way the universe came into existence with you coming into existence as far as you understand, as far as, as, far as my perception, uh, this whole reality emerged with me and from me. And I, you know, the sun can be shining and I could be having a wonderful day and the world is wonderful. Or I could be really down and depressed and then the whole world seems depressed from my perspective, from my experience. And yeah, this um, kind of meditating through these different layers from fear to sadness, to joy, to love, to peace, and to beauty. Um, yeah, I, I offer it to you. Uh, and I offer you the opportunity to go and bid on this piece on eBay. Uh, I'll also be making prints available. And I have a ton of artwork. This is just one of many uh, images. So I like this idea of uh, auctioning the originals online and then selling the prints uh, locally on the on the walls that I have and the art marts that I'm doing. And I'll set up a little bit of a storefront so that if you are interested in some of my art, you can adorn the walls of your own home. And hopefully it brings out some of the, the beauty 
of of your own life. So uh, yeah, thanks for listening. That's what I got for you. Check the link in the description to go to this piece. And if you've already missed it, um, yeah, stay tuned for more uncomplication, uh, more stories of life and our values and the art with which we live. So until next time, cheers.